Today I've compiled seven of my favorite creative ways to paint high end. Have you ever added a little bit of baking soda to your paint? Because if you haven't, it can really kick it up a notch. And you don't need a whole lot, especially if you're just adding it to some chalk paint. You can also take a little bit of spackling. I don't highly recommend the Dollar Tree spackling, but that's what I had on hand for this project. And you mix these up and it can give you a beautiful texture on any piece. I picked this matching set of ducks up at my local thrift store. I did clean and sand these down and I wanted to keep the project super simple but give it an amazing high-end finish. So to create that look, I just grabbed a chippy brush and you can grab them from Walmart, Home Depot, whatever, you know, Dollar Tree, and just start brushing on the mixture. Do be mindful though that if you don't mix that baking soda well enough, you're gonna have like little packets of white dust popping out. So make sure that you do mix it up really well. A little tip though, when you get to that last layer, make sure you tap it, tap, tap, tap that texture and that paint all over the place. It gives an awesome looking stone effect and really can bring several pieces together to look like one unified set. For some accents to our matching set, I decided to create like a collar effect with some ribbon and I guess you would call this burlap. <laughs> it's got some holes in it. I like it, I like it. You know, you can easily wrap ribbon in and out of it and then made a base with some solo wood flowers for the other duck. I love how simple and elegant this came out. Let me know in the comments below if you tried using baking soda with your paint. Sometimes a little matte paint is all you need to make something look high end. Inside this little container, I have some matte chalk paint that I've mixed up. And we're going to use that to apply to this little knickknack. At least that's what I call them, knickknacks, right? I feel like if you grow up in the 90s, everyone had knickknacks sitting around. Let me know in the comments below if you were born before the 90s. And yes, I was, and no, I'm not telling you how old I am. Mind your business. I'm just kidding, I love y'all. I was born in the 80s, that's that's the biggest hint you're getting. A little tip, whenever you're painting something like this that has a sheen, it's a good idea to use a chalk paint or a clay-based chalk paint. And if you're not, you should apply a coat of Rust-Oleum Clear Matte to help your paint attach to the surface better. Look how flawless and adorable this piece turned out. Taking paint to create a highlighted effect over a solid color can really give you a high-end look. How adorable is this shoe? I picked this up at my local thrift store and I want it to create a Cinderella looking type slipper. I'm using this beautiful blue color and it is a chalk paint. It's a good idea whenever you're painting over a silk surface or a satin surface to use a chalk paint, a clay-based chalk paint, or a multi-surface paint. And if you don't have any of those, you want to take some clear matte Rust-Oleum and give it a little spray. So this way your paint adheres to the surface slightly better. To give our slipper some contrast, I took a blue chalk paint slightly darker to do the bottom sole of our piece. And not to toot my own horn people, but I mean, on the side here, look at the precision. Okay, look at the precision. There's no painter's tape involved. It's just me and a paintbrush and a shoe. I mean, but seriously, it's a little impressive, right? <laughs> when I got down to the heel part, I decided to create a little bit of an ombre effect. So I grabbed some blue paint and painted the very tip of the heel blue and had it fade up to the lighter blue that we painted the sole. A little tip to blend two different paint colors together is to have an extra paintbrush with no paint. You can spray a little water on if you want and just go back and forth blending it until the colors mix. Now for the highlighting trick. There are a couple different ways to highlight. Here is one. Take a dark color where you have a raised section and go over the entire thing. Then get a dry paintbrush and take a lighter color and gently go over everything that's raised. It's going to highlight all of them, making them really pop on your piece 
giving you an extremely high-end looking appearance and no one is gonna know that this was a thrift store save. Sometimes a simple stripe of paint is all you need to create a high-end look. But to get there, you're gonna need one of these drill bits. And if you don't have that, well, you might need to run to the store and grab it. Because we're gonna need it to drill in our little tea light holes to these one by threes that we cut down to size here. You can take a one by three from Home Depot and cut them down into little squares or whatever size you like, and then use this bit to make awesome holes that fit perfect size tea lights. When you're happy with everything, of course, we need to paint it up and stain it up and <laughs> try not to drop things on film. I always try to look cool and it just never works out. But you all love me anyway, right? I'll take your silence as a yes. To get our stripe going, I want to grab some washi tape and put it across all three pieces of our wood. I use an X-Acto knife to cut them in their place and then grab more washi tape to wrap it down along the sides. So this way our stripe went on the sides of each little piece of wood in the exact same spot. I used an eraser to remove any of the pencil marks that were left to make sure that we were able to cut everything properly and then stained around our little piece of washi tape. And people, you can absolutely do this with paint. You don't have to do it with stain. I'm just taking this idea with stain and sharing it with you. Remix it into whatever works for you in your home decor. You know I'm always gonna try and give you options. When the stain was dry, I removed the washi tape to reveal the beautiful line that was there. I wanted to take some paint to make this a little bit more defined. So I grabbed some of my Dixie Bell paint that I have here and some more washi tape to go around the outside in the reverse areas of where I put the initial stripe of washi tape. Now I'm pretty steady handed when it comes to painting, but I didn't even have this much confidence. So I decided to just use the washi tape to make me feel fuzzy inside. If you are looking for a super simple way to give your decor a high end look, adding a stripe will absolutely give you that look. Now, not everyone's a fan of stripes and that's okay. Okay, this is just another option for you guys to use at home to remix however you would like into your own decor. For our demonstration purposes, I'm showing you here with some handmade DIY wood tea light pieces that I created. You could absolutely grab different pieces from Dollar Tree. It could be ceramic, it could be wood, it could be Family Dollar Five Below, or a different piece of wood from Home Depot and create your own decor adding a little stripe for a high-end look. If you've never whitewashed anything before, you're missing out. It's a really easy way to add a high-end look to any piece of decor. Check out this old piece I found at the thrift store. Don't it look like an ashtray? <laughs> It's not, I mean, I guess it's not, I don't know. We're gonna paint it up using some of Waverly's chalk paint and mixing in a little bit of gray. Can't forget about my ASMR lovers. Now for our whitewash, there's a couple different ways you could do this, but since it's a smaller piece, I wanted to kind of dry brush on our whitewash and then wipe it back. So I just took a crusty bit paintbrush that I had sitting off to the side that had some paint in it. And I started by dry brushing on our white chalk paints. And then I grabbed my little spritzer and sprayed the areas where I had the white paint and then I alternated it. I added more white paint as I needed to. I spritzed it as I needed to. And when it was still fairly wet because you wanna keep the surface wet, you can grab a paper towel or a microfiber cloth and just pull back the additional wet paint. Once your piece is completely dry, go ahead and seal it up. I used Dixie Belle's clear coat for this. And then I grabbed some florals and attached some of Dollar Tree's nautical rope using some tacky glue for our hanger and love how stunning this piece turned out.
Don't let the fact that something's plastic stop you from transforming it with some chalk paint. For this wall decor set, we're gonna need two, one, two of these garden dishes. And I'm gonna paint it up white using DIY's Paint in the White Swan. I have a link down in the description box if you're interested in grabbing your own. Honestly, grab whatever paint you have that is going to stick to plastic. I have a strong faith in this stuff. You could use regular chalk paint if you got some Waverly laying around or a nice multi surface will do the trick. Just make sure it's gonna definitely stick to some plastic. I put two coats of paint on these little gems and I did the front and the back just to make sure in case anybody looked around the side, they didn't see shiny plastic. You know what I'm saying? Then I recently found these beauties at my local Dollar Tree. Well, not necessarily my local, local one. I gotta drive a little bit to that one. And I've definitely seen like the wall floral pieces, you know what I mean? But I don't recall seeing the ones with these gold trim bits. So I grabbed a couple. And just in case you're ever wondering where I pick up things, I do have a browsing channel called Browse with Brandy. I keep a link down in the description box if you ever want to hang out with me and see where I purchase some things or different deals that I get. I bring y'all along with me each week. It has been my experience that these little stickers slowly peel up after you attach them to things. So I waited a couple minutes and sure enough, they started peeling up off of our little dish here that we painted. I decided let's grab some Mod Podge and slap it one down over top of this to ensure that our stickers are not going to come off of our dishes here. I'm going to be using a little foam brush, which is not something that I do very often. And I actually get comments about this. So I wanna kind of share this little tip with you guys. See the foam, it will eventually, as you're dipping it in sealer and then smooshing it on a project, slowly but surely start to wear. And with that wear, that means just like with a paintbrush and you will get bristles in things, your sponge will fall apart only the sponge is harder to peel out of a sealer than just grabbing a piece of a bristle off of a brush. So I do not use these very often. And I also make sure that if I am going to use these, I don't use them with a poly. I just use them with some Mod Podge and on small projects, just like this. I decided these pieces need a little something, something. So I busted out my Dixie Belle Gold Gildan Wax and put a little bit on my finger and then smooshed it right around the rim. I used some little sticky pieces to attach these to the wall. You could certainly use some glue and attach little jute hangers on the back or whatever to be able to put these on your wall. I think these turn out absolutely stunning and you would never know they came from the Dollar Tree. When all other high-end paint looks fail, ombre it. I've been wanting to customize my own textured ombre piece. We're gonna use some joint compound, just a little bit, and put into each one of our little bowls here, and then take some calcium carbonate. This is one of my favorite ways to make a texture with some paints. You can use whatever way you want. Baking soda will also work just fine and we're going to use a lot of it. And then I'm taking two different paint colors. I'm gonna use this one right here, and it's a chalk paint. And then we're gonna use a little bit of this because I wanted it to be slightly lighter than it was to mix in some with our other color, and then take this agave. And this is gonna take you a couple minutes to mix up. You're gonna make sure you do this very thoroughly or you will have little poof powdery pockets. <laughs> as you're painting coming out in your texture. So make sure you do mix this up really well and then you're able to get started. Your textured paint should look like this, nice and clumpy. <laughs> There's even some little poof pockets coming up. I did mix it a little bit more and right here is where I started mucking up. I started dabbing this on and I was like, hold on a minute, there's dents. <laughs> so I got me a real thin paintbrush and just started going in between all the creases 
on both pieces and then I came back in with the pouncer. It made my life so much easier. So if you're going to paint these, go in between the creases and then come back with the pouncer. To create an ombre or blended look, you're going to need three things if you're using two colors. You're going to need one pouncer or one brush for each color and then you're going to need your blend brush or pouncer. So since I'm using pouncers, I had one for each color and then I had one plain little piece of sponge I cut that I'm going to use for my blend piece. And I did the same thing at the bottom. Look at me. You see me pounce at first and I was like, oh, I forgot to go in between the lines. So my mind skips me so many times. It's like going a mile a minute and I'm over here just trying to catch up. <laughs> so I went in between all the little pieces and then came back in with our pouncer. You're going to want to let this completely dry before you start blending. This way your base colors are on here. And here you'll notice this is a little wet. That's because I started doing it and forgot to film. <laughs> so to get our ombre on, if you want to leave your piece like this, you go right ahead. Okay, there's nothing wrong with just the two tones without the ombre. But to get an ombre look, you're going to want to take your two colors, make them nice and wet right next to each other. And then you're going to want to take your plain sponge or whatever brush wet it up okay make sure it is wet and no color on it and then put it right in between where those two colors meet and you're gonna tap it tap 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 or you're gonna brush 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 and these colors are gonna gently blend together getting rid of that harsh line and sometimes you might need to switch out your sponge or if you're using a paintbrush a lot of times I will clean it in between doing this because the more you do this, the more color is going to get on your plain piece and then you'll have too much transfer from one side to the other. For the first piece right here, I decided to bring that ombre right up to the top and for the second one, I left it down lower to the bottom so you guys had two options. But before I did the second one, I wanted to just share with you guys the difference between two-tone and an ombre so you guys could see both look beautiful, especially with these colors. And then for the final reveal, I'm just showing you here how I blended the two pieces. And for this first one here, you can see that the ombre is lower to the bottom and just gently blended. And the second one, you can see that it's heavily blended and goes all the way up to the top both you can use the same technique that I showed but which one of these is your favorite thank you all so much for hanging out with me today let me know in the comments below if you plan on trying any of these high-end paint looks and until next time bye